Welcome back to Power Lunch. I, it's got a few thousand people listening to me or rather following me on Twitter. I sort of know what people want to hear and what they don't want to hear. And occasionally I put out something that they don't want to hear and I lose, I lose some followers. And it's the way of the world these days that uh, companies can't just have uh, a physical presence. They've got to have an online presence. How are some of them managing it? In the studio with me now uh, from MoTribe, co-founder of MoTribe, is Vincent Ma. And the headline um, that we, uh, of the interview is Emerging Trends, Intensity of Globally Changing Interactions and trade-offs. There have been so many instances of people that have been messing it up uh, recently. Vincent, is, is that the case? I mean, some companies are ahead of others when it comes to uh, their online presence and the way they manage it, whether it be social media, whether it just be a normal online presence. Absolutely. I think a lot of it has to do with which of those companies were early adopters um, and the ones that have learned the lessons while no one was really paying attention. Uh, so if you look at from 2004 onwards when Twitter, Facebook started getting really big, the companies that kind of came in early are the ones that are looking all right at the moment. Mm. A, a good case in point is... But you can learn, can't you? It's very easy to do so. Often when a new business comes out, it's the people that are first to introduce it to a, yeah. a country or a jurisdiction or to a sector of the economy are the ones that fall away because, the, because they make mistakes and other people learn from those mistakes. That's absolutely true. But I think it depends on whether you found the, the place for social media in your organisation. A lot of organisations are still trying to figure out like where does it really fit in? Is it more customer support? Is it about branding and advertising? A, a good example is um, you would know the story about Barclays and the interest rates yes. about two weeks ago. Yeah, so, ongoing, I must yeah. say. Yeah, and they've handled it quite badly, I think. And, and at the same time, they launched a fictional character called Dan on Facebook, and they were following Dan around and how does Dan save money? And everybody just started ragging Dan because they created the straw man exactly at the wrong precise moment in time. That's Literally, a disaster. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when you look at the Dan campaign, regardless of how well it was planned on the whiteboard, um, timing is everything. Um, you Has know, Dan been executed now, by the way? Is he gone? Well, well Dan sort of, he's lurking in the, in the sidelines. Uh, and if you compare that to, for instance, RB Jacobs with FNB, which is always a, a fairly good example, I think, of, of how to use social media to your benefit. I mean, just this morning, RB had solved like 20 people's problems. Uh, and that's great positive reinforcement, mm. whereas Dan just creates a straw man, you know, and opens Barclays up for attack base. So it's a very fine line between using social media, using online efficiently, and, and people embracing the clever campaign that you put together via social media, for example, and, and the ability for the market in whole to turn on you viciously and mercilessly and completely destroy your reputation, but not just within, uh, within, within days, within hours. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's a matter of having all your laundry arts on the line uh, and some of it's going to be dirty and how you deal with people seeing that mm. is always interesting. Um, but a lot of these sort of plans are cooked up inside of ad agencies that maybe don't know what the bigger picture is around, uh, you know, what announcements are coming up and so on. And they often find themselves on the wrong side of, of a greater thing. Mm. Uh, footballers are a great example. I mean, footballers are a business in, in, in yeah. their own right. You know, I mean, we had Rio Ferdinand out over the weekend calling uh, Ashley Cole a chock ice, for and he's had to come back and say, "No, I meant this, and I and I meant that." But just one slip uh, on, on social media, for example, is especially Twitter, and you're dead meat. I know, and somehow people think. I think it's because of mobile. People think because they're doing stuff on their phones, it's a little bit more private mm. and less public. And it's just as public as saying it on national television. And I think it's taking a lot of individuals, like people on the ground, time to let that sink in and understand what the full implications are. Mm. So what's your advice? And what do you, first of all, what do you do at, at Motra? Well, I, I'm the technology guy. So we build platforms that get to com build communities that are like a thousand to a million strong. Yeah. Um, and we work with mobile uh, quite intensively. Like for us, mobile is, is the way that the internet is going. I think there, there are more people who have access to mobile phones than running water in the world. Uh, and so there's, there's an Im information disruption taking place again. There's something wrong with the world, incidentally, if that <laughs> is the case, but I do take your point. Yeah. Absolutely, and it's pretty much access to anything, um, except possibly oxygen. Mm. So, um, you know, mobile is really big, and I think a lot of companies are starting to wake up to that now. We may be two years into the disruption, and it takes five to six for companies to really adopt it properly. Are we adopting it properly in South Africa? Are we ahead of our international peers on the same level or way behind? There must be some stuffy old companies that are yet to embrace what you've just been talking about. 
I think we are, but the mobile operators have been well ahead. Um, I think like we've got some of the cheapest internet access uh, pricing in the world, um, and the mobile operators have fixed up uh, billing so that you can launch content services across all the networks and bill properly, which is one of the key factors to that. Mm. Um, one thing that where we're lacking is smartphone penetration, and that's coming gradually. And if you speak to people in Silicon Valley, it's all about the iPhone and possibly Android. And in South Africa, the biggest phone is the Samsung E250 mm. and some Nokia's, which I really thought BlackBerry was making. It was, was one, I mean, one of the success stories for BlackBerry, yeah. which has had a disastrous time of late, has been South Africa. I think BlackBerry will, will continue to be strong simply because of the tariff plans and the fact that you can get free internet or mostly free internet on BlackBerry. Mm. Um, but I think gradually what's going to happen is people are going to realize they're actually better operating systems and the entire app world is going to be a big driver of adoption mm. in the mobile space. What about a company strategy now? I mean, if you're a medium to large company, do you have to get, uh, did you have to outsource your online and social media presence and all sorts of other presence as well? And so, right, get a company like yours to come in and say, this is what you should be doing. Or is there a, 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 a ghastly um, state in the future where there will be a whole division within a company that just manages this? Well, they have that already with the web and the internet. You know, it's, it's still pretty much a 50-50 decision whether you're going to insource or outsource. Um, and w what I think a lot of corporate managers are nervous about is having to manage people who live in this world they don't really understand uh, and can't necessarily relate to. Um, so there's merit in bringing in specialist agencies, definitely. Mm. Um, but it depends how core that's going to be. Mm. This is not just a fad. This is, got to, this is the end of, this is my last question. This is not a fad, is it? This is here to stay. It, it can't possibly be a fad. I think the fact is that people have become so reliant on this kind of communication um, and the availability of information. There, there's no way to go back, really, except some really big catastrophe, mm. I guess. Well, it's not going to happen. Vincent, thanks so much for coming this morning. Fascinating stuff. Thank you.